On a damp October morning, we briefly jumped over the Cheshire County line into neighboring Sullivan County and Little Langdon, New Hampshire, on the trail of a little something else. It's the cutest bridge in New Hampshire, come on. It is undoubtedly cute. It is officially the smallest covered bridge in New Hampshire. 30 feet across and it's just gorgeous. And you know, they used to call them with the kissing bridges or whatever, but it's almost too small for that because you could see from one end to the other. It is the Prentice Bridge right there on the town seal, but beloved as it is, it also got neglected over time, mostly because the road here, State Route 123, also known as the Cheshire Turnpike, stopped running through it. And now the Cheshire Turnpike right behind us here. Right, and this used to be the Cheshire Turnpike. Went right through the bridge. Absolutely. The road went away, but the love didn't. 2000, after local fundraising efforts, the renovated bridge was rededicated, though if you look closely, much of the original remains. This board may have been come from another part of the bridge right. and then they just used it to shore it up, but yeah, this is all original. But original beams, yep. original pegs. Pegs, right? yep, and it's got a good roof on it and it's got good underpinnings, so it should last another 100 years, we hope. Only eight miles south in Walpole, New Hampshire, you'll find Diston Hill Gardens and Nature Trail. In truth, it's creator Michael Nery's big backyard, but he's even more big on sharing. We bought this property, we bought 21 acres originally, and um, it had some really unique features on it. I wanted to make that available to the public. So he and his wife Kathy did. Gardens by their house are open in season on weekends, but their 155 acres now also include several miles of walking trails, all open to the public year round, all free and all focused on educating. I had a private tutorial in the bog, a quaking bog as I learned, literally floating on more than three feet of water. My hand now is at the bottom of this moss, sphagnum moss. <laughs> And that's, that's what we're standing on. It's like a sponge. It is like a sponge. And it actually holds an incredible amount of water. Neri is also intent on all visitors having access to the trails, abled or otherwise. A mile and a half of the trails are a wheelchair accessible smooth gravel. More was being added during our visit. What do you want people to get out of visiting here? A connection to nature? This is a labor of love for you. Oh, definitely. Oh, God, yes. Preservation is what the entire town of Harrisville, New Hampshire, is all about. The buildings are all still intact. It's Rare. completely authentic. Located in the rolling hill country just east of Keene, Harrisville is, in a sense, frozen in time. An entire town originally created for its mill workers. I think that's probably what makes Harrisville unique today is that the family that owned the mills kept them open until 1970. And in 1971, Historic Harrisville was founded and a new textile company, Harrisville Designs, was founded. And so they made it their priority to keep textiles alive and keep jobs in the village. Which makes Harrisville a national historic landmark village, but not a museum. Harrisville Designs makes and sells yarn and fine textiles and attracts spinners and weavers for classes and workshops. 21 other businesses also call the Mill Complex home today. Hey, how are you? But the center of this community has always been, and thanks to historic Harrisville remains, its iconic general store. The general store has amazing food, everybody's super friendly. It still feels like what it would have been like 100 years ago. The store is the heartbeat of the town. It's alive. It's an old building, but it's, it's youthful in its energy. The store's had its ups and downs over the decades, but survives, like the mill complex itself, by keeping current with an eye toward the future. For example, Mill 6 here, built in 1922, but more modern, then meets the eye. In fact, it's a fully modernized building and that Harrisville Designs has their spinning mill in here, then it's all powered by solar panels on the roof. And is that generating enough energy for, for this complex? Yes, it covers all of Harrisville Designs needs, the solar, and then we also have a hydroelectric plant in the basement running off the water power. A nod to the future while preserving history, jobs, and a strong and enduring sense of community. People who kind of all 
believe in what we're doing and want to be part of it. People raising their families right in this village, walking their kids to the school bus, stopping for coffee on their way back. It makes it magical. And for many visitors, the landmark general store established in 1838 is still the town's biggest draw. Yeah, it's known for its good food and friendly vibe. And Ted says it has the best BLT sandwich <laughs> that he has ever had. Just saying. That man gets around with food, so I would trust his opinion. Yeah.